Hey guys, my name is Bob Crum, and I'm an author and an illustrator. I live in Wisconsin. Don't feel bad for me. And yep, I basically do color for a living, and one of the things I've done in the past couple videos is kind of speculated what would it be like if a particular brand came to life. And right now, I think we should do Nintendo. I think it was Gluten Free Gamer uh, commented, we should do Nintendo. It's kind of begging for it. So yeah, here we go. You know, I initially start every time with these little tiny blobs of color, and I just kind of refine it and erase some and blow it up and try things. This is that classic pose, right? Joyful, you know, I'm jumping in the air, pumping my fist type of thing. You know, Mario's kind of known for that. And he's, let's face it, Mario is like the flagship, right? I remember that from right off the bat. Those of you who don't know who Mario is, wow. I feel like, I feel like even the Pope knows who Mario is. I am building out his structure right now. And see, in the Nintendo world, they're kind of known for big, round, bubbly shapes and these characters who are kind of, you know, really cheerful and obnoxiously colorful. So I'm kind of going for all those big, round, bulbous shapes in all these balloons because there are a million characters that Nintendo is known for, all pretty family-friendly. And I just kind of thought I'd capture them rather than little creatures running around with him, I figured I'd make him balloons. Because he's grown up now, right? This is Nintendo, for crying out loud. He was around, like, a really long time, and, and like, he's he's a businessman. Kind of putting him in a suit, you know? He's got a briefcase. Actually, it kind of looks more like a purse. Funny story, at one point I was carrying the bag with a big thing over the shoulder, and it was funny. Somebody's like, oh, nice purse. I'm just kidding. It's more like a purse or a man bag. And I was like, no, it's a purse. At any rate, so you notice, like, typically I try and keep things in proportion. And, you know, like the head is the right proportion to the body and the hands. But, oh, no, not in this one. Dude's got huge hands. If you look at Mario or even some of the other characters, they have like these huge gloved hands like Mickey Mouse, just too big and kind of round and sausage fingered. And so I'm thinking to myself, what would it look like if they weren't wearing gloves and they just had the big meaty hands? And he's got big meaty hands, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I gave him goggles on his head, and I was thinking, why? Because if this dude grew up, like, you know, I got my console in the 80s. He should be more grown up now than Nintendo is. And uh, maybe he goes to cons, and he's a cosplayer, and those goggles kind of signify that nerdy kind of cosplay thing. He didn't give up. He didn't give up on being a child, like most of us. Um, you'll notice I drew some cards in there. It's like, what are you doing? What you, Nintendo's about video games. Now, the crazy thing is, Nintendo really started in like 1889. Yep, 1889. They were actually a playing card company. Now, I'm not entirely sure what kind of cards. I'm certain they weren't Pokemon cards. Maybe just regular cribbage deck or something. Does cribbage have its own deck? Now, I don't know. So, so basically, they haven't quite left that behind. It's still a component of their business, even though it's a million years later. So, but I still made him kind of falling out of his purse, kind of trickling away into the distance because they're known for all this other stuff. All these balloons kind of signify characters we love. Um, you know, there's a Zelda shield in there. I'm digging that with the Triforce broken out. I even stuck something a little bit more modern in there. If you'll notice, way up in the top, there's a Mi. It's an M-I-I, -I, all right? If you don't know what a Mi is, it's kind of like your avatar in the Nintendo universe. It's really goofy looking, but it's highly customizable. Now it's time for color theory. This week, I promised I would try something more complex. And really, I just made it more difficult than myself, I think. I started with this purple color, and I kind of like it. Um, it's kind of plumish. I think I kind of used something like this on one of the other videos. And it just kind of, it appears to be gray with a purple tint. 
but what I'm gonna do is choose a different color of harmony. There's something called analogous color of harmony. I'm gonna choose something under and above that hue so that it stays in the same family. And I'm not gonna do only those shades, but I'm kinda try and make that the underpainting so it kinda pulls it all together. Yeah, eventually I'll choose some more bright colors, but right now I'll do, that des deserves to be pink. <laughs> I mean, some of this is gonna be red. But. So there's some dark purple hair in there. It kinda still gives the illusion of being dark hair, but you'll notice he's graying at the temples. Kinda like me. I mean, not me, other people I know. He is graying at the temples. He's getting a little older. You know, he still goes to cons. He's still cool with his playing cards and his little satchel purse that has kind of that classic NES controller on it because I couldn't resist. So I'm picking a green, and I kind of like the way it starts to bring the warmth into the piece. Everything so far has been weirdly cool, even that kind of pinkish red I've chosen. It's bringing a little bit more variation into it before I really go for it. I mean, you know, there's going to be that that helmet balloon that's in there. That's a Samus helmet from Metroid. Yeah, that's going to be bright orange-ish color. And that little cube that Mario jumps up and punches, that's going to be yellowish, a kind of yellowish gold. I guess part of the fun of this, I mean, it's all fun to me, let's be real. But part of the fun was trying to dream up what balloons to put up there. And I didn't I didn't go so obvious as I have in the past couple. I didn't put one Pokemon really up in this thing. I totally could have. And some people would be like, oh, you missed the boat on that one, bro. But it really wasn't my thing. And I get to make the pictures, so I'm not going to put Pokemon in there. Because it wasn't my thing. I didn't start messing around with that until my, really it was my youngest started messing around with that and I learned the rules and it's a, it's a full-on like card game with rules and a competitive scene and I'm an emotional player I'm just gonna pick stuff because it's cool I am not kidding I have a whole deck full of fairies yeah fairies the mighty fairy deck I also have one with dragons in it but I just thought it would be cool it's kind of a counterpoint to me I'm kind of tattooed and bearded and I play with a fairy deck in Pokemon. So I'm keeping the dark suit look because that's, you know, that's grown up, right? Now, I've got this power tie on them. Back in, the, I think it was in the 80s, maybe 90s, people were talking about red being a power tie. Like, that's so whatever. It's like, strong. Like, it's intimidating. Like, anybody would really be intimidated by a tie. It's dumb. You'll notice I put kind of a little... It looks like it says OK on it, but it's DK. Kind of homage to Donkey Kong because he wore a tie and it has a DK on it. I figure I'm gonna make him like soaring through the air kind of triumphantly enjoying his trip on his balloons because this would be a riot. And I kind of you know I kind of wish I would have made those clouds slanting in the opposite direction. I mean it, it can't be like perfect right but I really like the idea of sometimes opposing angles. You notice in the other videos, I flip the canvas a lot. Mm. I didn't at all in this one. Now I'm kind of like, after this, I'm gonna go back, look at it, see what it looks like flipped. See what I missed. Truth is, as illustrators and artists, even writers, or anybody who creates anything, we can second guess ourselves so much. And really, we just need to create. One of the biggest lessons I've learned over a few years of illustrating and creating art is just get the piece done. Artists who are watching me, just get stuff done. You're not going to be perfect every time. In fact, if you wait to make a perfect piece, you'll never have anything done. Did you know Leonardo da Vinci could bend a shoe of a horse straight with his bare hands? I don't know if that's an urban legend, that's pretty cool. He's like, he's like my hero, not just because of the horseshoe thing, but he really was the quintessential renaissance man. He was good at so many things, and I kind of want to be that, right? But I won't make it my focus. This 
simply don't need to be good at all the things. It may take me the rest of my life to master illustration and drawing. I learn something new every time I draw something or paint something. If you're trying to master something and you don't feel like you've learned anything in a long while, it's because you haven't stretched yourself. So if I were to give out homework, I'd say go out and make something that totally terrifies you. You can do it. I believe in you. And we've reached that point in the video where I ask you to like this video if you truly like it. And if you truly like it, then you might want to go find that button and hit subscribe. And if you subscribe to this thing and don't check your feed like every two seconds, you might want to hit the little bell. That thing will tell you when I drop a new video and also share it. Share it with people you think might find this information fun and also create. Create something, even if it's a better day for someone else.